Okay. Alright, so let's get started today. Okay, so the homework is due tonight if you guys haven't turned it in yet. So it's due by 11.59 p.m. So make sure you get that turned in. Uh, I think I just saw a question in the Discord before we started. So someone asked, uh, do we need to type everything in, into one script? And um, it doesn't need to show the output at all. So uh, that's correct. So you can type everything in one script in MATLAB uh, for your homework. I would recommend that. And then, you know, something that... I keep showing all of you during our lectures is putting a semicolon to suppress output. So I'd prefer you do that because all I need to see is your code. And if you show the entire output, it gets kind of cluttered. So I just need to see the, the code. That include wait, so for the re free response, there's free response, right? If I'm clear about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for your response, can we type that on the script too? Um, I mean, I guess if you want, just make okay. that as like a comment, but, comment. All right. you know, you can just type it in the Word doc too. I see. So double comment, um, it'll create a, like a section and it'll run that script per, per, per that section you created, right? Um, it won't do that by default. You can tell MATLAB to run it section by section if you want. Oh, wait. Okay. I forgot. There's a run by section. Yeah. Up top here. Okay, all right. Okay, so a few questions in the chat. If we don't put a semicolon in the script, do we lose points? Uh, you don't lose points, but, um, you know, as we continue on in the class, you should really put a, a semicolon on pretty much every line of code you have. The only time you want to put a semicolon is if you actually want to check the output, you know, in real time. Um, so in the future, you should um, always use the semicolon, but I'm not going to mark you down. And then another question is, we don't have class this upcoming Monday, and yeah, that's correct. So this coming Monday is President's Day, so there's no class then. And then on next Wednesday, so this upcoming Wednesday, we'll have our first quiz then. So I'll send out an announcement to kind of, um, I guess, uh, refresh all of you for what is going to be on the quiz. It's basically going to be on, you know, the topics we've covered so far. So that'll be chapter one and everything that we cover in chapter two. Um, probably not from this class, but last class. So just making arrays, but I'll send out an email for the topics that you want to go over. So it'll be all of chapter one and kind of uh, the first parts of making arrays. So making a column vector, making a row vector, and making a matrix. And that'll be at the end of class. So I always have quizzes at the end of class. They're usually like 15 minutes long. And we do them on Canvas. So I'll also show you the format on Canvas. But basically it's like, I haven't made any um, quizzes yet on here. But it'll be on Canvas. And basically I'll have a question. And you'll put your answer in a text box. I'll have another question. You put the answer in that text box. Okay. All right, so we'll get started now. Um, actually, Patrick, for the quiz, um, mm -hmm. is, is it is it um timed? Yeah, you'll have uh fifteen minutes to work on it. Uh, right, sorry, so I just joined. My Zoom wasn't working. Uh, what are we doing right now? Uh, we're about to start, so I'm gonna give you guys some exercises to work on. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me close out of here. Let me clear all of this. Okay, so today we're going to be first doing the exercises that I just talked about, and then we're going to continue on with arrays. So for the vast majority of today's class, we're going to go over array addressing. So um, this is an important, important topic that we're going to use, you know, a lot throughout the semester. And then we'll also have a little brief on the RAND function and RANDY function. And they're basically used to generate random arrays, so um, so we'll talk about that too. Uh, but before we actually do that stuff, I'll have these exercises I want you to work on. So we have a few of them in the, in the beginning of this class. So first one, I want you to make this matrix. So you're going to do it in two different ways. The first way, you're going to make it kind of row by row. And the second way, uh, you're going to make it column by column. So... Um, we went over how to make a matrix using these two different methods in the past few classes. So 
are going to have two different variable names. So you can do like A for one and B for a different one. And yeah, you can make a new script if you want, or you can just have, um, you know, it's up to you. If you want to have just one script for chapter two for arrays, you can do that. Or if you want to do it kind of lecture by lecture, you can do that too. All right, so I'll go over how to do this now. So hopefully everyone's been able to, um, you know, work on this and, and get it working. So we want to make this matrix A using two different methods. First one, we're going to make it kind of row by row. So we're going to start out by doing the top row and then the second row. And the other method is doing column by column, which typically is more tedious. So I usually don't do it that way. So row by row, let's do a equals one, two, three. So that's going to be the first row. And then we put a semicolon to go on the next row. And that'll be four, five, six. So in this case, I, I won't put a semicolon right now. And I'm not going to put a semicolon just so I can uh, check this output, you know, in real time and make sure that it looks good. So I'm going to run this. It'll ask me to save the new script file. And remember your script file, it has to start with a letter. So let's just do Okay. Alright, so here's the matrix. So it runs, you know, just like we wanted it to. So that's method one, doing it row by row. And I'll do it the other way, uh, column by column, which again I think is more tedious. So uh, to do this, we need to make we need to wrap each column and its own set of brackets. So we can do one, and then we put a semicolon two. So that'll be our, or sorry, I should put a four. So that'll be our first column here. So we have one and four. Then I can put a comma, or I, can, or I don't need to put a comma, you know, either or to go into the next column. So I'll do two, semicolon five, and then we have three, semicolon six. Okay, so then I run that and then we get the same matrix once again. So, um, you know, method B here looks uh, pretty messy in my opinion. So typically I do it uh, kind of with this top method for method A. Okay, any questions on making a matrix? Pretty simple. All right. Okay, so next exercise we have here, I want you to make um, this row vector from these column vectors below. So the first thing you'll do is make these two column vectors, A and B. And with those column vectors, you're going to write some code to then generate this column vector R. So um, basically, you need to uh, use the transpose operation. All right, so I'll give you a minute or two to work on this one now.
Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a second. I'm gonna usually I make a poll to check when you guys are done, so I'm gonna make a new one. Alright, you should see the poll now. Alright, and then I'll basically, uh, I'll continue on if most of you are done. Alright, so most of you are done. Okay, so uh, let's go over how to do this now. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is make these two column vectors. And there's a question, does the order matter? So um, the order, it's going to matter once we actually create this row vector R. But in the beginning here, I can create uh, the column vector A first or column vector B. That doesn't matter. Uh, so the first thing, we're going to make these column vectors. So I'll do A equals negative 2, 9, 7, and 10. Let's run that and just make sure that we have it. So here it is. And for column vector B, I can use the same method that I just used for column vector A by putting in all of these semicolons. Or, like we learned last time, I can first make a row vector, so 379. And from that row vector, I can transpose it. So if I do that, then we have a column vector here. So for this exercise, you know, I want you to make these column vectors first, which we have right now. And then we want to transpose and append um, these column vectors to a row vector. So let me run this again. So currently this is what we have. So we have both of our column vectors here. And now we want to use these to create the row vector R. Okay. Oh, yeah. Negative 10. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we want to create the row vector R. So if we look at it, we see that it's 3, 7, 9, negative 2, 9, 7, negative 10. So the first vector that we need is uh, vector B here. So what we'll do is we'll put in B, and we want to transpose that to a row vector. So we're going to use our apostrophe. And then we want to um, append to this row vector um, uh, row vector A that, you know, is now going to be transposed. So if we run this now, then we get the, the correct output here. So we have a new row vector here, 3, 7, 9, negative 2, 9, 7, negative 10. So basically what we did was transpose uh, both column vectors to a row vector, and we appended row vector A to row vector B. Okay, so does that make sense to everyone? Yes. Alright, so we have one more exercise. I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for this, I want, I want you to create this matrix A on one line of code this time. And I want you to do it by creating and modifying row vectors. So on one line of code, you're going to create um, some row vectors, and then you're going to modify them in some way. You're going to have to transpose them uh, to, cre to create this matrix A. So I'll give you another minute or two to work on this one.
Oops, I didn't want to, I don't want to close out in it. Okay. Alright, most of you are done. Okay. Okay, so let's go over this exercise now, and then after this we're going to start some new stuff. So, view exercise 3. So we want to create this matrix A on one line of code um, by creating and modifying row vectors. So, um, again, we're going to be using the transpose operation. So, first off, let's do A equals 3, 4, 5, 6. And then what we'll do is make a, a new um, row here of 2, 0, 2, 4. So currently, if I run this, we have a 2 by 4 matrix. So we have two rows and four columns. But we want to, you know, have a 4 by 2 matrix. So remember the transpose operation, it uh, swaps all of the rows with all of the columns. So if I use the transpose operation and then I run this, it'll swap all of the rows with the columns. So remember, it kind of like flips like that. And then there we go. So now we have our matrix A just like we wanted to, to have it. Okay. Any questions? No. Okay. All right. So next thing, we're going to talk about the transpose operation some more. So, you know, so far when we've been using the colon operator, we've been making a, a row vector. But we can use our transpose operation to first make an evenly spaced row vector with our, col with our colon operator. Then we can transpose it to make a column vector. So, transpose operation to make evenly spaced column vector. Okay, so first thing, we'll do A equals 2, 2, 16. So that'll be an, even, an evenly spaced row vector starting from 2 going to 16. And we have a step size of 2. So this is what we've been doing for the class um, so far, this kind of uh, method right here. But if I want to make a, an evenly spaced column vector from this row vector, all we have to do is transpose it. So first off, I'll show you if we, if we do this right now, and we put in an apostrophe just like this, um, nothing is going to change here. So if I run my script, I'm running it. Um, you know, we still have a row vector. So it's doing this because all MATLAB really sees is that it wants to kind of transpose this value here of 16. And well, you can't transpose a scalar. You know, there's nothing to flip about. Uh, so so that's not going to work. So what we have to do for MATLAB is actually specify that what we created here is a vector. So we have to wrap this in brackets. So if I wrap this in brackets and then I use the transpose operation, uh, MATLAB will then be able to, to look at this line and say, okay, uh, they made a vector from 2 to 16 with a step size of 2, and they want to transpose that entire row vector to make a column vector. So now if I run this, uh, then we get a column vector. All right. Okay, so the rand function, I'm going to go over the rand function and the randy function. So this is kind of an aside right now. Um, you know, it's not t like usually this uh, function, I think it's, there's actually a full chapter on random functions in MATLAB for the book that we have. But um, occasionally, I will use these functions um, just to go fast, basically. So if I want to make a, a matrix that is like 5 by 5, typing out every entry by hand kind of takes a while. So we can use the uh, rand or randy function to kind of speed this process up. So occasionally, I'm going to use this uh, function. So I just want to kind of go over, you know, what the arguments are. And um, of course, there's actually some engineering uh, applications for random functions. You know, if you're studying some, you know, um, like if you think back, I don't know, to middle school or something, you know, you would have like a, a random population of, 
I don't know, rabbits eating grass or something weird like that, and you would have to, you know, solve some math problem. But um, there are some, of course, applications to having some random numbers. Uh, but that's, you know, not in this course, of course. That would be for some other engineering course. So anyways, uh, we're going to go over the rand function and again and the randy function. So first off, we'll talk about rand. So if we only put in rand, that's going to generate some random number um, from 0 to 1. So it's going to be a scalar. So say uh, rand function. Okay, so if I type in rand here and I run my code, let's suppress this one. Then we get some random number that's in the range of 0 to 1. And it's again, it's only going to be one value, so it's going to be a scalar. Okay, so I'm not going to use that one very often, but, you know, thought I'd mention it. The next one that we have is rand of n. And what this will do is generate an n by n matrix of random numbers from 0 to 1. So let's do a equals rand of 2. This will generate a 2 by 2 matrix, uh, where all the entries in that matrix are a random number from 0 to 1. So if I run this, then... You know, this is what we get. And then uh, one more that we'll go over is rand of m comma n. So in this case, I can actually specify that I, that I want m columns, or sorry, rows, and n columns. So uh, remember, um, this, is all, this is always the kind of notation that we have for matrices, m by n. So rows by columns. So I'll do, I don't know, B equals rand 3 and 2. This will generate a 3 by 2 matrix. So we have 3 rows and 2 columns. OK, so I'm going to extend this now to the randy function. So the randy function is very similar to the rand function, except the i uh, kind of indicates in a whole integer. So you know, right now we have um, kind of numbers going from 0 to 1, and there's a lot of uh, kind of numbers after the decimal. So if we use the randy function you know, with this i here, I can have a whole integer, which is, you know, more useful for examples in class. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to often use this function here. So randy of i max, this is going to create a random integer from 1 to i max. So we're going to have a scalar once again. So let's do c equals randy of 5. So this will generate one number, a random number from 1 to 5. So in this case, we have 3. If I keep running this, now it's going to change. Um, so yeah, I'm building up here to when I do, I will typically use this function to make a uh, random matrix. OK, so here we have randy of i max comma n. Let me change this. Randy I max. I want to go over this stuff, you know, somewhat fast because this isn't the main purpose of this chapter, but I want to explain these functions that I'll be using occasionally. So I'll do Randy. So the first argument is I max. So that's going to be the maximum integer that we want to have or that we can go up to. So in this case, I don't know, I'll put 10 and then we put a comma n. So n, this will be our n by n matrix that we're going to create. So I'll do 3. So in this case, we're going to create a 3 by 3 matrix. And all of the entries in this matrix can have a whole integer value from 1 to 10. So if I run this, then here we go. So we have a 3 by 3 matrix. And all of these values here are going to be within the range of 1 to 10. Also, you see over here, I said, it creates a pseudo random number integer. So basically, this isn't uh, entirely random. It, it's kind of created from a an algorithm to predetermine what numbers it uses. But that's just a technicality. So whatever you you can basically think of it that it's a random matrix. Okay, we have one more uh, that we're going to go over, which is what I will typically use in in this class. So we have randy i min comma i max 
I'm going to call them size 1. So um, SZ1, that stands for size 1. And then SZN stands for size N. <clears throat> okay, so um, this function here, the first few arguments that we have is specifying the minimum integer that we want and then the maximum integer. So basically the range of numbers that we can have. So by default, Randy has been working from one to some value that we specify, like up here. So this was um, a range of one to 10. And up here, this was a range of one to five. But we can change that to be you know, some other range, um, like five to 10 or something like that. And then these last two arguments are the size of the matrix. So basically n by n. So we'll say the amount of um, rows basically, and then the amount of columns that we want to have. Okay, so let's do E equals Randy. And we have to put in brackets the kind of range of integers that we want. So I'll do 5 to 10. And then I'll put comma 3, comma 4. All right, so this is going to create a random matrix that has a size of three rows and four columns. And within this matrix, all of the integers can um, be some number within the range of five to 10. So if I run this, and then we have a three by four matrix here, and all of these numbers uh, fall within the range of five to 10. All right, so um, any questions on this? I know I went over it kind of fast, but I just want to give you like a, an explanation for, you know, these functions that, I, again, I'm going to use a few times throughout the class. What does I min, I max, um, SC1, SCN really mean again? Mm -hmm. So I'll make a, a comment here. So I min, that's going to be the minimum integer that we can have. Oh, I okay. care. Maximum integer then. Same mm -hmm. thing, maximum integer. Mm -hmm. Yeah maximum integer that we can have. So in my example here, I had five for I min. So if you look at the matrix here, the lowest value that we have in here is five. And then I max, I made that 10. And the maximum integer that we have in this matrix is 10. And then- Did you just make that up or did you like, did you brought that thing from there? Did I make what up? Um on the the e equals six ten seven seven. Oh yeah this was generated from this line of code here so that's why oh, i use I this see. yeah it's a, it's oh, a really okay. fast way to make matrices okay okay i see mm -hmm. yeah so that's why i'm going to use it occasionally just because it's a lot faster i see okay and then sc1 this stands for basically um the first kind of entry for our size so in this case it'll be it'll stand for rows basically the amount of rows that we have then SCN that'll stand for the amount of columns that we have okay there's a question can we create an identity matrix so yes uh, you can off the top of my head I don't remember the function for that but I know you can maybe we can search it up here identity Oh yeah, it's the I function. Literally typing out I. So I could do like I of, I don't know, we'll do five. And then we have our, our identity matrix here with, um, you know, ones along the diagonal for the identity matrix. All right, so let's move on now. So we're actually gonna start to go back to array addressing now, which is, you know, the main topic for today. So I'll make a new section here for array addressing. Okay, so, you know, again, this is an example of when I'm going to use that Randy function here. I'm going to create a four by five matrix and I want to do this, you know, um, quickly. So if I was going to type this manually by hand, it would take a while. So. I can just use the Randy function to quickly generate some random matrix. So when I use this uh, function, you know, I'm going to create a different matrix than you guys create. Um, so keep that in mind. 
but you can still follow along with my explanations to understand what's going on. So here I'm going to create a random matrix that has a range of 5 to 10. And we're going to have four rows and then five columns. Okay, so let's run this. So here's the matrix that I have. And from this matrix, I'm going to use array addressing to specify the value for some um, index in this matrix. So let's say, for example, that I want to find or specify the value for the, uh, for the index that is in the, I don't know, let's say the third row and the fifth column. So I want to look at this value right here. Did I say fourth row or third? I don't know. I, I want to look at the third row and the fifth column. So this value right here. So to do that, I can create, you know, a variable if I want, I'll say a, and remember, we need to reference the matrix that we're looking at. So that's capital A. And then in parentheses, we're going to put the row that we want to look at and then the column. So we want to look at the third row. So I'll put in three. And then we want to look at the fifth column. So I'll put in five. And this should give us a value of six. And it does. So let's do it up here in our script now. So if I run this right now, it's probably going to give me a different value because I'm going to run my script again. So it's going to create a whole new random matrix. But we can check this right now again. So I just ran the script and a new matrix was generated. So if I look at the third row in the fifth column, that value is 9. And we see that that's the value that shows up with our array addressing that we used on line 50. All right, any questions? No. Okay. Okay. So we can use um, array addressing to specify um, other, you know, indices for a an array. So sometimes we want to look at the last value in an array, or the um, or the first value, or maybe the min or the max value. So if you're generating, um, let's say a random, um, actually, well, maybe we shouldn't say a random vector, but let's say that we have um, a lot of vectors that have different uh, lengths, right? And we want to find the last value for all of these vectors. Um, we could do this, you know, by looking at the matrix or the, the array that we have and looking at the length, calculating the length for all of them. Um, so we could do that. Or a, a fast way to get the, the, the value for the last element in the array is using the, the end argument. So let's make some random vector here. I'll actually type it out this time. So I'll say end argument. All right, so let's make some vector C. And I'll make this a column vector. So I'll do 10, negative 9 square root of 9, pi 22, 13. And to make it a column vector, I'm going to transpose this row vector. All right, and then let's run this. So when we run it, I can see straight away that the last value is 13. Um, but if I want to reference this in code, what I can do is, let's say, I'll make some variable called last, and I'll say C. And the argument that I'm going to put in here is end. So this will um, tell MATLAB to look at our row vector or our column vector C and give us the value for the very last index that we have. And there we go. So in this case, it's a value of 13. All right, so we can also use a kind of similar functions to find the minimum and the maximum value in some array. So min and max arguments or functions. All right, so let's create some, I'll do a random, uh, no, I'll just make it by hand actually. So I'll do uh, negative two, 13, 55, Nine. Okay, so now we have a row vector D. 
me suppress these up here. Okay, so here's our row vector t. So imagine that we had a, a really long row vector or some really long, um, you know, column vector or matrix, whatever it could be. And we want to find the minimum or the maximum value within that array. So if we want to do that, you know, looking at it by i would take forever, especially if we have, you know, uh, numbers with a lot of integers after the decimal point. So instead, we can use the minimum and maximum functions. So I'll say, I'll make a, a variable here called max, and I'll type in max of d. So uh, take note that here um, I have max is actually a function, while up here for the finding the value for the last element in an array up here, we use the end argument. So end isn't a function, it's an argument. So that's why you put end inside of parentheses. But the minimum and maximum, um, you know, methods to find the minimum and maximum value in some array, they're actually functions. So we'll use uh, the function max, and then for the argument for that, we put the array that we want to look at. All right, so if we run this, let's also do min, and I'll say min of d, and I run this now. We see max is 55 and min is negative two. So since this is a really simple row vector that we made, we can verify that by you know just looking at the row vector itself. But uh, just to show you guys when it might be useful, let's do e equals rand um, I don't know, let's do 10. So this will be a 10 by 10 matrix. So here, you know, we have a lot of uh, values here. Let's actually open it up over here. And I'll make this a capital E. All right, so here's our 10 by 10 matrix here. So there's, you know, a lot of values and it would be it would suck, right, to, to find the minimum value in here and the maximum value within that matrix. So I'll do max of E, and we can say max E. And I'll do min of E equals min of E. Um, okay. Why is it giving me this error? Positive integers are logical values. Okay, so I guess we can't use it with an array. I'll have to look at this, I guess. Let's do e comma one. So this will be the first column. Okay, so there's something I'm not seeing here. So I'll take a look at this after class because you know this um, should work, but I'll figure it out. Index in position one. So let's look at our matrix here. We do have a positive value. Okay, so I'll look at this after class and I'll send, like, I'll go in the Discord and, and kind of update you guys in there. But, um, so I guess a different way that I, I should explain this is if we had a really long, let's say for now, some kind of vector, and there's a ton of values in this vector. Instead of looking at it by i, you know, looking in a workspace here, we could use um, code using the min and max function to find whatever the minimum value is within that vector and then the maximum value within that vector as well. Okay, so next thing we can display uh, specific rows and specific columns within our array that we're looking at. So. In this case, uh, a good way to think about it would be if we have a matrix again. So let's make some random matrix here. So say specific rows and or columns. All right, so let's make some matrix A. And I'll, I'll actually make this uh, by hand again. So I'll do I don't know, 10, 3, 5, 6. That's our first row. And then the next one, we'll do 20, negative 10, 13, and 4. And then we'll make one more here, 2, 3, 4, 8. Okay, so here's our matrix here. 
And let's say that instead of looking at just one value like we did earlier here on line 50, remember on line 50 here, we were looking at the third row in the fifth column. But if I want to look at an entire row or an entire column, we can do that too. So let's say for this matrix A, I want to look at um, all of the values in this third row. Uh, to do that, let's uh, make a variable called third. I'll do third row. And we're going to reference our matrix A. And I want to look at the third row. So I'm going to put in a three. And to look at all of the values in that row, we want to look at all of the column entries basically for that row. So I'm going to put a comma and then to get all of the values, I'm going to put a colon. So now if we run this, then we get, um, you know, the third row that shows up down here. Okay. All right, any questions on that? Okay. All right, so we've got another exercise here to, I don't know, hopefully uh, make it a little more exciting. Uh, okay, before we do this, we have a, a question. For a column, would it be the opposite? Okay, a good question. Let me hide that really quick. So if I want to look at the, let's say, the second column here, and yeah, it's going to be different. So we'll do second column. So we want to reference our matrix A. And I want to, in this time, or in this case, I want to get all of the rows in the second column. So I want to get this first row, this second row, and this third row. So I'm gonna put a colon, so I get all of the rows, and then I'll specify uh, column two. And now if we run this again, then you see that we have the, uh, the second column here. So yeah, good question. All right, so exercise. So I want you to create um, this matrix A, so first do that, and you're gonna do it on one line, so kind of like an exercise that we did earlier on. So create this matrix A in one line by transposing, um, and you're going to have to append these two row vectors here. And then after that, you're going to create a variable called out or really whatever you want that displays uh, the third row. So we want to have all of the values in the third row, so 10 and 10. Okay, so looks like the vast majority of you are done. So let's go over this now. Let me clear this out. Um, wait, Patrick. So percentage percentage is common, and therefore it creates a section. 
Is that is that right? Um. Uh, one percent is a comment, and then two percent two percent signs makes a section. It's still a comment, but it makes a section. Makes a section. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's take a look at this. So we want to make this matrix A from on one line where we are transposing two row vectors. So we'll do A equals, we have 4, 0, 2, and 10. And then we have 1, 9, 5, and 10. So this is just like one of the exercises from earlier on. So if I run this right now, we currently have a 2x4 um, a matrix here. But I want to make this a 4x2 matrix. So I want to swap the rows with the columns. Okay, so to do that, we're going to use the transpose operation. If I run this, then now we have our matrix that we want to create. And now we're going to make a variable called out that's going to display all of the values in the third row. Oh, I think before I was looking at the fourth row. So we want all the values in the third row, so we want to see 2 and 5. So we're going to reference matrix A. I want to look at the third row. So I'll put in a 3 and then a comma. And we want to look at all of the columns in that third row. All right, and there we go. So we have values of 2 and 5. All right, everyone uh, clear on this stuff? OK, so if anyone has any questions, you know, make sure that you guys ask. Um, maybe everyone gets it and that's good, but just going off of last semester, I think we're going a bit faster, which is good, if, again, if everyone gets it. But if you have a question, someone else probably does, see, does too, so just make sure to, to ask whenever you don't get it. Okay, so there's a question in the chat that you got an error uh, when trying to do this. So um, most likely then something was um, maybe you missed. Uh, typing something in here because if it's exactly what I have here, then it should run. So make sure you just double check what you typed. Uh, did you transpose it? Maybe you forgot to transpose. Okay, yeah, okay. All right, so we can uh, select and display a specific range of values. So in this slide here, let's say that we want to look at rows uh, 2 and 3, and we want to get, um, for those two rows, rows 2 and 3, we want, we want to look at the values in the fourth column. All right, so let's do um, specific rows and columns. Okay, so we're going to make our matrix H. Um, I'm actually going to type it out again just because I want to be, at least in these uh, first few weeks, they're going to be very uh, specific with what I have and what you guys have. So I'll, I'll make this matrix by hand. So I'll do 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, because I'm not creative. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And we'll make another one. 0, 2, 0, 2, 0. And we'll make one more here, one more row. Do 90, square root of 16, pi, 4, 2. All right, so we're adding this. This is our matrix down here. So we have a 4x4 four four matrix. Wait, oh, I'm missing one. We have 4x5 matrix. So we have four rows and five uh, columns. So. 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And, you know, if we have, like, a really big matrix, we can use our size function that we learned earlier. So I'll type in size of H, and that tells us that we have four rows and then five columns. All right, so let's say that from this matrix here, let me run this again. I want to show you, I want to show you the matrix in the command window. So let's say that I want to look at um, rows 1 to 2. Let's first start out with that. Kind of go step by step here. So we'll say um, h underscore r 1 underscore 2. Maybe there's a better way to do it. 
Uh, but this is standing for, you know, we're looking at matrix H and I want to look at rows one and two. So to do that, we're going to reference our matrix H. And, you know, before what we did is we put the row and then the column. So if I want to look at, let's say first, let's look at the first row. So I can do one comma colon, and this gives us all of the values in this first row for the matrix H. But we want to look at um, rows one to two. So to do that, I'm going to have one, and then I'll put in a colon there. So this is now telling MATLAB to do one to two. Might need brackets, no I don't, okay. So this is um, now telling MATLAB for the rows argument to look at rows one and two. Um, or in this case, really one, two, two. So I can change this uh, to be like three. So in this case, it'll be rows one to three in all of the values for those rows. Okay, so there we go. And you know, someone might have a question right now that uh, what if I wanna look at rows one and row three? So we'll, we'll go over that in a minute here. But for now, we have rows one to two, and then all of the values um, for those rows. All right, but maybe I want to instead look at uh, rows one to two, and I wanna look at the, the values in the fourth column. Right, so I don't want to. I don't want to have all of these columns here. I just want to have the fourth column. So, basically, I want to see values of forty and eight. So I'll make a new line here. I'll do h underscore r one to two, and then column four. Kind of a weird looking variable name there. So we want to have rows one to two. So I'll do one colon two. And I want to look at column four, so I'll just put a comma and then four. So now if we run this, then we get values of 40 and eight, just like we said that we should get. All right, everyone following along so far? Yeah. Okay. All right, so now let's do um, rows one and three. I'll just make a common action instead. Let's say rows one and three, and maybe column five. So looking at our matrix here, I wanna get uh, row one and row three and column five. So I should see values of 50 and zero. Okay, so let's do, uh, I'll call this D. So in this case, we're gonna reference our matrix H, and then we wanna look at rows one, and then uh, row three. So first off, I'll just do this, so rows one and three. Um, it's actually, yeah, okay, I'll show you like this. So if I currently do one comma three, and then a comma five, we're gonna get, it should be an error, yep. So, you know, we're looking at a matrix here which has two dimensions, and what I put in here is I've kind of implied that we had three dimensions. So remember, our arguments need to be rows and columns for array addressing for a matrix. So if I want to look at rows one and three, and then column five, I have to wrap the rows that I want to look at in brackets. Okay, so now uh, MATLAB, since we use brackets, MATLAB is taking this first argument as rows one and then row three. And then we uh, kind of exit out of those brackets and then we put a comma and then our second argument is going to be the column that we want to look at, which in this case is five. So again, if we look at our matrix here, we are looking at rows um, one and three, and then we're going over to column five. So we have a value of 50 and zero. All right, let's do another example here. Let's say, rows, um, we'll do, I don't know, two and four. Yeah, we'll do two and four. And then columns, we'll say one, three, and five. So I'll actually have you guys work on this right now, and this will be a good time to have another exercise. So 
I want you to create a variable that's um actually yeah you know well yeah make a variable and basically you're gonna be creating a matrix here which is gonna have rows two and four so here's row two here's row four and specifically within those rows we're gonna have columns one um column three and then column five so the values that or the matrix that you should generate here it should look like this two six eight Columns 1, 3, yeah, 2, 6, 10. Oops, 2, 6, 10. And let's go over here. We have uh, 90, pi, and 2. All right, so this is kind of the matrix that you should get once you use uh, array addressing. All right, so I'm going to let you guys work on this for one or two minutes. I always notice not everyone answers. I'm not like, you know, it's okay if you don't answer, but that just makes me think that not everyone's doing the exercise, which if, you know, if you want to just follow along, if that's better for you, that's fine. But I always find that kind of amusing. There's like half of you that answer. That's fine. <laughs> I'm not turning bitter. Hey Patrick, um, after after the class is over, do you, can you can can you help me with homework and stuff like after class is over? Mhm. Mm yeah. All right. Thank you. I hope you don't think I'm turning jaded. I just found that amusing. All right. So, um. Let's go over this exercise because most of you looked like you were finished. Okay, so we want to have rows 2 and 4 and then columns 1, 3, and 5. So what I'll do, I'm just going to comment these out here. Okay, so let's do, uh, let's make a, a variable called, I don't know, matrix. No, it's dumb. Okay, we'll do capital Y. So I want to look at matrix H here. So we're going to type in H and I want to look at rows two and four. So we need to have uh, parentheses. And then within these parentheses, we're going to put our arguments for the rows that we want to look at and the columns that we want to look at. So first I'm going to put in brackets two and four, because I want to look at columns two or rows two and four. And uh, for this first kind of step here, I'm going to put a comma and then a colon. So just to kind of look at what we have here. So right now we have rows two and four, and we have all of the columns for those rows. But we want to change this to look at specifically columns one, three, and five. So again, we're gonna use brackets, and we're gonna put one, comma, three, and then comma, five. So now what we're doing here is looking at matrix H, looking at rows two and four, and then columns one, three, and five. So if I run this, here's our matrix H, 
And then here's the matrix that, that we just created, Y, which has rows 2 and 4. And we have uh, column 1, so we have 2 and 90, which we have. Um, then we have column 3, which is 6, and pi, which we have. And then we're in the fifth column, we have uh, 10 and 2, which we also have. Okay, so uh, everyone clear on that? Okay. <clears throat> okay, so we have one more exercise. I think this is the last exercise for today. Um, but what we have here is we're going to first make this matrix W. And then we're going to create a, a row vector U that's going to append all of the values in this third column to all of the values in the second row. So the output that we should see is um, 5, 1, 5, 1, which is the second row here. And then appended to that is the all of the values in the third column, which is 1, 5, 1, 1. I probably could have chose better numbers than that, but that's what we have. Okay, so I'll give you another... Uh, a few minutes to work on this one. So let's go over this now. Okay, first thing we want to do is make our matrix W. Make another comment here. Maybe I should number the exercises that we have. Our array exercise N. Okay, first thing we want to do is make our matrix W. So, again, I probably should have made a better matrix than this with you know, more different numbers, but first row we have three, uh, five, three, one, one. Second row we have five, one, five, one. Third row, three, one, one, two. And then the fourth row is three, two, one, one. Gonna suppress the stuff from before that I don't need. You'll see if I don't suppress an argument or a line, by the way, that MATLAB, you know, they're kind of highlighting this equal sign here. And if you hover over it, it, it actually gives us a warning. I know mine keeps like going away there, but it says um, to terminate the row with a semicolon. So that's an easy way to find which line of code isn't suppressed. So now once I put in that semicolon, that little highlighting thing goes away. All right, so here, is um, our matrix W. Okay, so there's a question uh, for this matrix, does it have to be exact or can we use the Randy function? So yeah, you can use the Randy function if you want. Um, I'm just making this exactly what I have in the slide just so I'm kind of referencing the same exact numbers. But if you use the Randy function, you can look at your specific matrix that is generated and you can confirm that everything is still correct. Alright, so here's our matrix, and what we want to do is um, append all of the values in the third column to all of the values in the second row. 
So we're, we're creating this uh, vector u. So first off, I'll have all of the values in the second row. So this will be, um, we're going to reference w. And I want to go in the second row, and I want to get all of the values. So first off, let's first look at this right now and confirm that it's correct. So we have all the values in the second row. And now what I want to do is append to this all of the values in the third row. So cur currently, if I um, put, a, put a comma here and I put W, and I want to look at all of the values in the third row, if I do this, uh, currently I'm going to get an error because these dimensions are different. We're going to have a row vector and a column vector. And what I'm trying to do is append a column vector to a row vector. So um, that's not that's not going to work out, you know, because we have a column vector, and I'm trying to append to that some row vector. So those dimensions are different, so we can't do that. You know, we have a size of of a one by four for the row vector, and then a size of four by one for the column vector. So what I have to do is transpose this column vector to a row vector. So we use our transpose operation. And then once I run this, then it's now correct. So now we see the the uh, the second row here, which is 5151. And then appended to that, we have the third column, which was transposed itself to uh, make this you know larger row vector u. So here's the third column. We have 1511. And then it was transposed. OK. So any questions on that? There's kind of a lot going on in this exercise, so I think it's a, a good one. Um, but if there's any questions, you know, feel free to ask. Why put why put a why put a like a apostrophe uh, <clears throat> on the neck and the parentheses in three? Why put this one right here? Yeah. Uh, because we have to transpose it, right? So. Transpose it. Because we're, we're looking at the at the third column here, so we have values 1, 5, 1, 1. So currently it's a column vector, and we want to append those values to a row vector. So we can't append a column vector to a row vector because those are different sizes. Let me try to kind of draw it out here. So we have um, 5, 1, 5, 1. <clears throat> so that's row 2. It's actually, yeah, I'm just going to put it like this just for kind of demonstration uh, purposes. And what we're trying to append to that is column 3, which is um, 1, 5, 1, 1. So we're trying to take all of these values here, 1, 5, 1, 1, and put it to the right of here. So we know we want to put it in this kind of area right here. Um, but currently, they're different sizes. You know, here we have a 4 by 1, or sorry, 1 by 4. And for the column, we have a 4 by 1. So because those dimensions are different, we can't um, make them one whole new vector. So we need to make sure that the sizes are the, or actually, at least the dimension is the same. So I need to convert this column vector here into a row vector. So that's why we use the transpose operator up here. Does that make a little more sense? Oh wait, is it because um, it's because like we don't want it, we don't want to make it go down like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we we can't um, we can't append a column vector to a row vector because they're different sizes. So if you tried running this code without the transpose operation here. Then you get an error, and MATLAB will tell you that the dimensions of the array isn't consistent. And again, that's because our row vector, we have a row vector, and we're trying to append to that a column vector, which, you know, we can't do. They have to both be row vectors in this case. All right, so if that's still unclear, uh, stick around after class, and I'll try to clear it up. Alright, so um, I thought we would get to, to this slide and finish off here, so I guess that's good. So here are some other useful array functions that we have, and this is taken from the book. So I don't know which page it's on, but if you are following along the book, you can 
um, look at it. You know, it says table 2.1-1, so it's somewhere in chapter 2. Oh yeah, also, something really weird in, on the online copy of the book, the, if you have the letters F and I together, it doesn't show up. I don't know why. So you see up here, it says ND of X. That should say find. So all the time, if you have an F and I in this uh, PDF, it doesn't show up if they're together. So it's really weird. So if you see anything weird like this in my uh, screenshots that I take of the book, um, assume that there's an F and an I together. Okay, so we, here we have find x, and this will be something that we actually uh, use later on, so I won't talk about it too much right now. Um, but it, it'll help us find, like, if we know that some value is in, in, in some array, like we know that we have the number 90 somewhere in an array, but we don't know the index of where that is, we can use the find command, and it'll tell us that, okay, uh, the value of 90 is in, you know, maybe row 22. So that's uh, very useful. And again here, this is, oops, we have find of A right here. So this is um, using it for a matrix. Uh, the length command we've gone over before. Length space we've gone over. Log space is like length space, but it's for, um, you know, a logarithmically uh, spaced vector. We have max A, which we talked about. Min A, we talked about. And um, what we're probably going to start off on next time is the norm command. So that's in the next slide. So we have the norm command here and then the absolute value uh, command as well. And then size of A, we've gone over that. Um, sort A, we're going to use something like this later on. Um, once we talk about importing data into MATLAB. So we'll, we're, we're going to import data and read it as a table. And then often we want to sort that data that's in that table in some kind of manner. So we can sort stuff in ascending order or decreasing order or um, depending on the type of data that you have. Let's say you have like um, dates or something, you can sort it by the date as well. And the sum command, that's just to add up elements. So we're not going to go over all of these. I'm going to go over the ones that are, you know, more important, but... If you want to, you know, have a, a, a look at whatever is discussed in the book, you can reference that as well. But um, we do cover most of these, but I won't cover all of them. Like um, some of A, I don't think we actually go over, but that's a pretty basic one. Okay, oh, sorry, I didn't know we ran over time. So we're over time by a minute, so sorry about that. But um, that's it for today. So make sure that you remember that there's no class on this upcoming Monday. And then on this upcoming Wednesday, we're going to have a quiz at the end of class for the last 15 minutes. And I'll send out an email for what kind of topics you should study to uh, prepare for it. All right, so that's it. So I'll see you guys on next Wednesday. And make sure you turn in your homework by 11.59 tonight. All right. Thank you, Professor. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Professor. Yep. Wait, you said new homework? I thought no, it was going to...